There's a lot of opportunities to do creative things with ebooks and be able to generate revenue in different ways that you probably didn't think were possible. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed with your guy, Bees, where we talk about everything related to entrepreneurship with a twist of business acquisitions. And today, 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 we got Miss Shayla Turner herself, where she is going to help us to expose the world of ebooks. I've been hearing so many things about ebooks, and everybody always talk about ebooks, and I'm like, is it really a full ebook? And you know, how are you really getting these ebooks written? And man, it takes a long time to write it. And you know, is there an easier way? I've been thinking about all of those things, and now Shayla's gonna help to expose that. Oh, so, Shayla, welcome to the uh, to the show, to Entrepreneurship Exposed, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. So we gotta get started by you telling us a little bit about yourself. We want to know a little bit more about you and how you came into this world of ebooks, and then what led you to where you are right now. Awesome, awesome. Well, um, I am, in short, a full-time mom who desires to be nothing more in life than a full-time mom. Um, so <laughs> I got into, um, I launched my own business nine years ago, really just because I got tired of nonprofits losing funding, and then I didn't have a job. So I said, what skill set do I have? How can I utilize that? And I got into consulting. Long story short, after experiencing what most people don't talk about, and that's that season where you're broke and busy, <laughs> I started realizing there had to be an easier way. And I'm very thankful that my background has always been in research and development. So I started researching what are easier ways that entrepreneurs are able to leverage their knowledge and turn it into income without sacrificing time. And that landed me into the world of ebooks. So one of the things that I've been able to pride myself on is creating research-based ebook models so that people are able to monetize their ebooks in creative ways um, so that they're generating revenue a lot easier than what you usually see with a $5 ebook funnel on social media. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm intrigued. Here we go. And, and getting deep into ebooks, you know, it, I've done certain things like, and maybe I'm giving away some of your techniques already, but, yeah. but you know, I've, I've done things like where if I had a, um, a, a presentation that I did or a speech that I was doing and it's recorded, and then I'll be able to go on sites like Fiverr or Upwork and then have somebody take the presentation and then transcribe that and then help to create a book from it, right? Yeah. Do you think that that's a, a good technique or anything else that you have? So like, it's one of many techniques, right? And so certain techniques work better for certain people depending on what your audience looks like. So a lot of times people say, oh, well, Bees did it this way. I'm going to do it this way. Well, Bees has built an audience that knows, likes, and trusts him already. <laughs> um, and so his presentations hold a level of weight. Other individuals need to utilize different strategies. So one of the things that I encourage people to do is to have more involvement in their development part, because if you have an audience informed development process, it's a lot easier to sell than trying to put it out there after it's already a finished product created by someone else. Mm, I like that. I like that. Okay. And, and what got you really into this space overall? So I know, you know, as a full-time mom, and then you said exactly you were looking for the, the key words that you said that was most important to me was also to be able to get my time back. Yes. That's everything for me. <laughs> I, I, I have always had a very spoiled experience as far as jobs. My first job when I was 15, 16 was at a law firm. I worked there up until I got pregnant with my son in college. Um, at 22. So I've always had jobs that allowed me flexible schedules and um, to be able to really just do my own thing and be creative. So I worked a traditional <laughs> job for only eight months. Eight and, months. Um, really good. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, well, they let me go. I wish I had some kind of story. That oh, I just packed my stuff and I stormed out of there and I believed in myself. No, <laughs> that wasn't it. Um, but 
I was into just um, helping people with their businesses, right? And so I would continue to do that. But what I realized were two people were running into two problems. Okay, before you get to the episode, I just wanted to take another moment to say thank you to each and every one of you for supporting the channel. Entrepreneurship Exposed is starting to grow like crazy and it's all thanks to you guys. Now, if you like the content, like the information that you're getting, like the guest speakers, like all the strategies, then the way that you can support us is by subscribing to the channel below. Now, after you subscribe, you wanna make sure that you also like every video, you comment on it if you can, and even more important is to click that notification bell. That notification bell will make sure that you get to see every single episode with all of this amazing information so that you can get started on your journey as an entrepreneur. All right, now back to the episode, let's go. They didn't have the time to do the things they needed to do, and they didn't have the capital to be able to invest in their business. And so I was running into the same problem. How do I begin to inject more cash into my business as well as being able to create more time? So I had already known that this was a pain for me. Um, and so side note, I told you my background was nonprofits. That was, I was the epitome of a nonprofit girl. Uh, I worked with youth and my biggest passion, and I'll kind of touch on this at some point, I'm sure, because I'm not a person that believes your business should be your passion, but my biggest passion is um, working with youth, particularly young men who are incarcerated. And so that was something I did before. And because I did it before, I kept on like nearly a caseload of mentees. I even had judicial custody of five boys. And I was doing all of that and working this business and I had a very young son and I was getting very, very overwhelmed. And so at one point, November 2018, I just checked out. I just really, really checked out. And my business started to suffer because I didn't want to look at my computer. I was just, I was completely drained. And so I started to realize I have to do something different. I need to be able to inject more cash flow into our business. Um, one of my mentees at the time, a kid I had been working with since he was 14, was sentenced 21 years in prison. Wrongfully so, because he had a public defender, but I won't keep your platform with uh, my soapbox. And it made me realize that, girl, if you're going to raise a Black boy in this country, you better be wealthy doing it. And so mm. I went to the drawing board and started figuring out how can I keep my time so that I can still be the same community advocate, still be at every PTA meeting, but also be able to generate revenue that will allow me to be able to create wealth and to have pots to pull from for access. And yeah, and so that's that's where eBooks came in. Okay, Shayla, you just said some key things that's gonna derail our entire conversation. Right? Uh, no we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna go away from ebooks for a second, right? Okay. First thing, uh, kudos to you and what you're doing. That that's awesome. I have a passion of helping the youth as well uh, to create wealth and to find that path to wealth that was hidden from us for so long. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I tell the story every time that I remember in college when people were telling me, "Oh, I just put down ten thousand on a house." I was like, "Where did you get ten thousand dollars from? Like, how? How? It doesn't make any sense to me." Right? Nobody could explain it to me. And if I had the information that I have now, if I had that when I was 17, I don't know where I would be right now. So my mission is to give that information to the young adults. And now we're gonna tie that into what you talked about as two common problems with capital and time. But before that, um, so an another big initiative that has been, uh, that we've been doing over the last few years is something called November to Remember. And during that time, November to remember, uh, through uh, one of my nonprofits, Bag uh, mm -hmm. Assets Generationally, um, we were able to. So we were focusing on the young adults, the youth that were in um, uh, like foster care. They're you know they're in the system, and you know they're going from group homes and all that type of stuff. And what we would do is buy out all uh we went we partnered with some walmarts for example like walmart super centers and then we would go and buy out everything out of the walmart myself and i bring some of my entrepreneur friends and then the community started to come out and we would buy out everything that could be like a present a gift and we would give it to them during uh the holiday season and that was two two main charities that we worked with was kids in distress they focused on the youth below 12 like 12 and below and then uh, Children's Harbor was the other one that focused on like the teenagers that are also in the foster care system. 
But my, apart from giving them the gifts during the holiday time, my next goal was then to educate them on you don't have you don't have to be a rapper. You don't gotta you know uh, trap and and get into trouble either. You can be a businessman, acquire wealth, and you know uh, change the whole direction of your future. And you know, of course, most people are not trying to hear that. They're like, oh well, I don't know how I'm gonna be a businessman. But the power of business acquisitions is the key, right? Acquiring businesses, eighty percent of businesses that start up from scratch are gone in five years. A lot of people want to be entrepreneurs, but it doesn't, you know, it, it ends up failing, right? But you get a head start and you get a better chance of success if you acquire an existing business that's cash flowing. You walk into it and there's cash coming in. There's employees. There's a, a, a whole playbook of how to how the business works. Instead of you having to figure it out, it's there. And now it's just about how can you expand it and take it to another level, right? And I have in, in my community, the BBI, the Business Builders Institute, where I teach this also, the, our youngest member is 20. Our oldest is like 67. So to, to say that, to see that we have a young adult who is in there and now saying, wow, I could do this. I can acquire a business and I can do it with no money out of my pocket in, in certain ways if by structuring LBOs. And this is not a Oh, well, hey, I got this quick play you can run and is you know, you can make some money. It's not nothing like that. This is a sustainable strategy that's been going on for generations and will not go anywhere. Yeah. That is powerful. And I, I know right now, just off of the little bit that you said so far, that I want to work with you further to, to help the youth. I, I wasn't as much focusing on uh, incarcerated youth, but I would love to help them as well and let them know that, listen, you can come out. You, you It's hard to, it may be hard to find a job, but guess what? You can acquire a business mm. and then you you own the job. We, we we acquiring businesses right now that black people couldn't walk into 50 years ago, but now we taking it over, right? So so I'm sorry, I had to, you derailed, you derailed the conversation a little bit. No, no, but it's, <laughs> I think, I, lo I love what you said about, it's not just about quick plays, right? But I think one thing I do want to touch on, and this is going to uh, show my own personal uh, background and how I grew up. Mm. A lot of people are interested in faster money mm. because their situations are urgent and because they're in survival mode, right? And in order for you to even think strategically or think long term, you have to be able to put out those immediate fires. Understood. And so one of the biggest reasons, and I'm, I can't wait to even get to how ebooks tie into that is a lot of the boys I work with while they're incarcerated, they're making money from ebooks. Nice. So when they come out, they've got housing, they've got opportunities. They know how to accumulate money, thousands of dollars per month. My son is 10. He just sold one of his um, ebooks. We converted into a curriculum. It just sold for $5,000. This is one sale. So now we've talked about problems and I know we're going to get to the pop part in a minute, but it's really hard to convince a kid to clean his room when he's already making that kind of money. You know, it kind of took away my leverage, but <laughs> it, it gives, there's a lot of opportunities in it from just the way people see eBooks. And so my goal is to teach see people, help people to see that this is a new way of you monetizing information that you know, and every single person has information that can be monetized. Oh my goodness. We have to partner because I can see you and, you know, helping to put out those immediate fires to then help them to start focusing yeah. on the sustainable wealth over time. That coming together, that is powerful. I, I, I need to know more. I need to know more. Normally I would wait a little bit later to pop but we got to pop it now so that we can continue the conversation. So let's pop what it really means to get into the ebook world. What are the pros, the opportunities, and the problems of the, the, this model overall? Awesome. So the pros of creating ebooks to be able to generate money is that once they're created, they're done. Um, and this isn't something that's like inventory that has to go out a certain point. You don't have to fulfill an order. You can increase your customer service because it's all automated. Um, people are already able to access it. So it also requires less trust. They're not waiting on shipping. They know as soon as they purchase it, they're going to get that immediate access. Um, so that is one of the biggest, biggest pros is that once you create it, you can always repurpose it and it sells in the background, right? So I can be doing anything and 
um, receive alerts that something has been purchased and we're generating that revenue. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as opportunities, this part is my favorite part because there's so many different opportunities of eBooks, right? So I'm going to give you one example of one of the, and I literally have a hundred different ways that you can make money with eBooks, but one of the ones and one of my favorites is selling directly to organizations or schools, right? Even individuals. I'm going to, I'm going to give you, you guys this because I want, I want you to know how easy you can leverage this, even if you're in a traditional job. Yeah. If you decide, like one of the greatest opportunities, let's say you're an accountant, you're really good at accounting, your company has hired you on because you have this level of expertise. You can provide onboarding tools to HR departments for other accountants and be able to make bigger money per sale off of an ebook. It's still considered an ebook, it's still a guide, you're still providing it to them digitally, but now you're making more money per sales without a lot of social media presence or any social media presence, right? But there's a lot of opportunities to do creative things with ebooks and be able to generate revenue in different ways that you probably didn't think were possible. Problem. Problem is the most important. <laughs> the number one problem is a lot of people don't believe they can make money or that money is easy to be made. That's the number one problem. So a lot of people believe that money has to be hard. It's a mindset yes. thing. It's yes. a serious problem. And so we immediately start thinking, well, if this is if this is some kind of a scam, this isn't something that I can do. And, and we cancel ourselves out. I literally have a client who has hit six figures this year off of a potty training guide. Ooh. <laughs> you can create and leverage anything that you know well that solves a pain for someone else and really be able to generate revenue. Um, but again, another problem is this is a long game. You really need to find what is your individual strategy that's gonna work with you for eBooks. Some people can launch a $5 eBook funnel and hit millions of dollars. Other people that doesn't work for them. And so they get discouraged and they say, oh, well, eBooks just aren't a thing. No, that particular strategy didn't work for you. Um, I've been creating and doing eBooks for a long time, but that's not something that works really well for me. I don't have that type of a volume in my audience. But what I can do is I've sold eBooks and guides to prisons and been able to leverage that money to pay for housing, to pay for legal fees and other things for things I want to do in the community. So you can make bigger dollars by being able to find what is your particular lane with eBooks. But the biggest problem is that you've got to be willing to actually try out those different things and see which one is actually going to stick for you. Ooh, okay, okay. Would you suggest, so like in my space, I mean, mergers and acquisitions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially I, I, I'm, I didn't create what I do. This has right. been going on for generations. Right. Absolutely. However, I kind of modified it and adapted it to my own strategy within the space, right? right? Would you suggest for me, a better strategy would be creating a, a complete ebook about everything I do with the whole, you know, all of the phases of the process mm. or separate ebooks with different parts of the process? That's a great question. Separate ebooks that speak to one. So every ebook should only give people one result. And that's a big, big mistake people make is they want to put everything inside of one ebook. And then people don't get high results because there's so many different things for them to get out of it. Focus on one result. The other thing is your ebook has to speak to their pain and not your solution. Wait, say that so, one more time. Your uh, yes, your ebook has to speak to their pain and not your solution. For example, you might be a nutritionist. And you know that the answer is, and but you got to eat better, <laughs> right? Right. That's, that's, the, that's the answer. Yeah. But your audience is speaking to the pain of, I can't lose this last 10 pounds. Your ebook needs to speak directly to their pain. The ref, like your title, your topic needs to speak to their pain. And then you help them to get to what the solution is. It's the same reason as you going to a doctor. And before they really begin to unpack what's wrong with you, you're getting a Tylenol to reduce the pain. This doesn't stop anything. It just gets you to a point where you can actually process and tell them what's happening and unpack it. Yeah. Business is no different. 
you knowing about business acquisition, okay, what is the pain that this kills for people? What is the number one pain that this is going to solve? Well, it's going to get rid of, like you just told me about that startup, yep. right? This is going to help them to be more likely to be successful. Okay, so who is suffering with that and how do they recognize this pain? Yeah, yeah. So for example, you want to then speak to that. And so what I would say is focusing on those smaller results that you can get and how that helps to aid them on that overall pain that they feel that they have. I love it, I love it. So, you know, obviously I would think, uh, and, and I didn't get to fully elaborate on your time and capital aspects as being yeah. common problems. But when it comes to business acquisitions, most people, I, I've had so many people that uh, have come to me and they're like, yeah, but I don't know if I wanna acquire a business and it's like another job and I got so many other things I'm doing. But it's, if you do it the right way, it's not buying another job. You're buying a business. Everyone has this misconception that CEO is the greatest thing in the world. I want to be CEO. Hardest, hardest. I don't want to be the CEO of nothing. It's another <laughs> job. I want to acquire a business. When you start a business from scratch, you don't have enough revenue yet to be able to maybe even pay yourself, much less pay a CEO to take over everything for you. But if you walk into a business that's already got established, already got revenue, it probably comes with a management team as well. But then on top of that, you could it has revenue that you could then hire a CEO. So you get your time back, right? You don't have to be the one in it. Now that's a mindset shift too, because a lot of people feel like, oh, it has to be me. I have to work in it. I can't yeah. trust anyone else to get it done. I would rather 10 people working 80% as good as me rather than me have to work 100% by myself, yes. right? So so getting the time back and the capital, because now it ain't a matter of, oh, how am I gonna increase revenue in order to expand? What kind of loans can I get in order to expand? You're not even thinking about that so much. You're walking in the cash flow, the capital is there, and then it's just about how to take it to the next level. So, different that, so that would be like, for example, that would be one of your eBooks, Walk Into Cash Flow. Walk in, oh, that's the title yeah. right there. Shayla just gave me the title, Walk Into Cash Flow. Two <laughs> Step Into Cash Flow. <laughs> and so now you can tell them this is how, so now that appeals to their pain point because that's their worry. They're worried about cash flow and you can walk them through um, how to be able to purchase a business that already, like how to look for what their cash flow is, how to be able to walk into it. Now your only focus in this bit, this thing though, your ebook, is to just focus on identifying cash um, flow businesses, right? And now being able to acquire them. You don't have to go into all the other things. That's what your other eBooks are for. But this makes it very clear, this particular part of the process. Oh my God, I'm in love. I love this. I'm so excited. I'm thinking about it in my mind. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have a whole series of m and eBooks and things. Oh man. And for a while I've been thinking about it the wrong way. Cause I was like, okay, you know, I know I should write a book about everything that I'm doing, but that's because it's just a, a, a large daunting task of writing a whole book of everything I'm doing. But no, I did this in corporate America too. It's called small step improvements, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times you have an end goal, but okay, we know this end goal, but now what's the goal for this month or this week? And then once yeah. we clear that, it's like, it, it keeps the momentum going because it's like excited. Okay, cool. I, I accomplished that. Now the next goal. Now the next goal. So you're breaking it up into small chunks. Whereas if you're looking at the whole two year plan, it's like, oh my goodness, I don't know how I'm going to get all this done. You know? So it's, it's very similar with the ebooks. I, I love this. This is very interesting. And I can see how it can easily apply uh, even young adults, as you, you, as you mentioned. Because I remember I, I had a friend who just had a baby a few years ago and he was like, I don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> and I got a couple kids, so I could have had an ebook talking about what was the ebook that you mentioned someone had? Um, no, you should have one on potty training. Potty training. Potty training. You would think, like, oh, nobody needs to know that. That's, that's, I already know. Everybody knows it. No, everybody does not know it. So yeah. you get your thoughts and your experience in doing, going through potty training into an ebook, there's a market for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You'd be surprised at what it's a market for. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, have you, I know you said you have no desires of doing anything else other than being a housewife. You said that, right? <laughs> but obviously you're doing more than that because you're also- Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Now, in that realm, 
first of all, most businesses scale by acquiring another business and rolling it into itself, right? So, uh, you know, why build out a whole marketing team when you can just go acquire a marketing company and then bring it into, you know, that company? Um, have you thought about acquire, ever thought about acquiring a business before and helping your, your efforts and what you're doing with ebooks and such? Yeah. So I actually, um, I actually have. So, um, conscious consulting is one of a few businesses, but one of the things that, um, we did that made our model different and very, a new shift actually for our company is I went from the first I was, I created ebooks. I was putting out my own digital content a lot, but I was also generating and making them for other people. Right. Um, and so one of the things I started to realize was happening was that people weren't seeing it through with that one product or they weren't seeing the results they wanted to see with one product. And to be very honest, I was able to start to hit $10,000 a month without ever running an ad, never ran ads um, from eBooks alone. And that happened because of the variety of types that I had and the different ways to do it. So what I decided to do was I created this list of a hundred ways to make money with eBooks. And um, I started to put the list out there. And then I took the time to make a training for each of the different 100 ways. So now we have a 100 part um, store that has all things, Digital Idea Bank is what it's called. And people can go and purchase any of those trainings to learn those different ways. It comes with templates, it comes with all of the tools. Now, this helped us to be able to scale because we then turned it into a membership so that people can purchase monthly and have unlimited access to it. So it allows me to work with more people with less time to free me up to be able to do it. Um, now, outside of that, the biggest opportunity that that then creates is for my clients, my members to be able to duplicate this with their own businesses. So to be able to start to ultimately create their own exit plans um, out of their businesses, especially my service-based entrepreneurs, by generating vaults of digital content that then provides that access and information to their audience. Mm, okay, okay. Oh man, my, the wheels are turning in my head right now. <laughs> Shayla Turner has the wheels turning in my head right now. <laughs> All these, I love it. Um, I want to put back up on the screen. I saw a, a comment that popped up. You can see it right there. Uh, so I, uh, Leslie, met, you know, mentioned that she should write one about how to prepare for elderly parents. So she just went through quite a bit and is still going through it right now uh, with her father, um, who's you know elderly and you know the mind is failing a little bit, the body's failing a lot, um, dealing with preparing for potential end of life, you know, prior to it happening. Uh, dealing yeah. with the real estate and, you know, selling the real estate, need, whatever you need to do, getting the, getting the power of attorney. And she learned certain things like about trust and uh, how to get, I think it was something related to like a medical trust or something along those lines in order to pay for medical fees. That's a lot. In that brief few months of going through this and panicking through it, she's learned a lot. That is a definite ebook, wouldn't you say? It is. So the, this is the biggest part of it, right? So I want to give you the difference between a really good ebook idea and one that's going to be extremely marketable. Mm -hmm. When you have information like Leslie, like you do, you have got this information that you're realizing is a serious pain. You want to recognize why you now know it's a pain. You didn't know it was a pain before. And most people, until they get to that point, they'll never understand why it would be necessary for them to have a tool like yours. So those are one of those things where you then end up convincing people as to why they wanna buy it and that never works and is never successful. What you wanna then do, and my recommendation would be, would be to pitch it directly to nursing homes, um, retirement facilities, things mm -hmm. like that, because now you're giving them a competitive edge to provide something for their families that will help and equip their families to help them to stay longer, mm -hmm. which allows them to make more money. Um, and it also begins to allow that facility to have the help that they need and the support that they need from the families of actually getting their information. So whenever you want to see yourself with an ants like with this thing, like, oh, this is my high high book, this is it. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Begin to research and dive into who needs this, who knows they need it, 
and who could afford. <laughs> uh. Uh, and once you've been able to check those three boxes, it'll help you to start to weed out. Now, how do I want to put this information together and who do I want to pitch it to so that it is going to have those results that I'm looking for? That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, would you consider, why are we talking about eBooks though? Why not also a physical book? Mm. Um, eBooks because they need to be digital. Physical books, there's so many different variables and it takes out a lot of your profit. So for example, the average eBook is priced at $25. That's significantly more than the average physical book. Physical books require publishing. They require ISBN numbers. They require so many different things um, to be able to put it out there. And the time and energy you're spending selling something, putting it together, marketing it, somebody purchasing it, you packaging it up, taking it to the post office, you really didn't make any money. Mm, definitely. I'm just e-books saying. allow you to be able to make unlimited money and it's a lower risk. Like for example, I have for myself personally created over 40 e-books, right? Now, even in doing that, I had three e-books that were a complete flop. I'm talking about did not do anything. My audience wasn't checking for those e-books at all. <laughs> so, you know, after I got off the little ego shock of the fact that which is like, I, I put out an ebook and it didn't even work, you know? yeah. um, it was three of them. I decided to okay, I'm not gonna not gonna worry about it. I kept kept producing, right? And they didn't die or anything. They're just sitting in my computer. So I decided that I wanted to be able to repurpose them, and this is why ebooks are a better um, ideal than print books. Mm -hmm. I reached out to a consulting agency that had a different audience than me, but they had similar objectives and goals. But not only was their audience different, um, their audience was um, way bigger, right? They had a bigger reach. So I reached out to them and pitched for them to purchase the rights to these three ebooks, right? Mm -hmm. If they could have these three ebooks, they could sell them at their, um, for, for them for themselves. They can completely rebrand it, everything else. I gave them the entire master files for $3,000. They got $1,000 each for each of these ebooks. These ebooks have been collecting digital dust <laughs> for a year for me, but the context of them was something that was very time sensitive. And I knew if they didn't get out now, it really would be obsolete pretty soon. Nonetheless, they purchased those ebooks from me for $3,000. They loved them so much and made so much money, they ended up hiring me some time later to create a couple other ones for them. But I would not have been able to do that if I had created a print book. Understood, understood. Gives you a different level of flexibility. And I can see the fulfillment uh, being a, a, a pain, for yeah. sure, on a physical book. Like, you know, basically like you were saying, going to this, you know, postage and all that stuff. And, and our world has shown us that any time we could shut down, you need time. to be able to utilize digital um, practices, and this is one of the greatest ways to do that. But okay, so let's go back to Leslie's question, right? Would you say that since she would be targeting elderly mm -hmm. and and the ALFs, the assisted living facilities and such, uh, do you think digital still would be good for them? Because some of them are like, now nah, I just want I don't know this computer stuff. I just, you know. The elderly wouldn't be the ones reading it. It's to help them to be able to prepare for their elderly parents. Right. They wouldn't be the ones reading it and the facility would be the one that uses it. Now the facility can decide to print and bind them if they want to, they own it. Or the facility can send it to them in a welcome email, which most of them do anyway. So definitely I would still recommend it though. Okay, okay. And then we have a great question, which I kind of brought to you when we were off stage, <laughs> offline. But we got to go into this one now. So, how do you feel about using AI to help produce ebooks? So, when AI first became like a thing with ebooks, everybody kept saying to me, Shayla, do you use it? Yada, 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 especially with my development. Now, for copyright reasons, I never felt completely comfortable with it because this information is getting pulled from somewhere, folks. Mm -hmm. So, that was always a thing. But most people find that their ebooks are not as successful when they market it. And it's one reason you cannot wait until a product is done to market it. Right? If you have created a product and you don't know how to market it, you created it wrong. That's just that's just a fact. You created it out of ego, folks. Sorry to break it to you, but you created this tool that nobody asked you for specifically, and that's why you don't know who's going to buy it. Whenever I'm teaching people about creating ebooks, 
It is so important that you understand the development side that needs to happen first. Now, AI can definitely assist with certain avenues of it, but it won't speak directly to your target audience. Whenever I'm teaching a client, um, we have a we have an ebook course and it's called the one day ebook course. I teach people how to make their ebooks in one day. And in that, the biggest part is helping you to be able to identify who you're targeting because you want to pinpoint keywords. You want to pinpoint what they're currently looking for, where they're at actively asking their questions. So I'll give you give you an example. And this is a tip that you guys can use always. I never recommend selling on Amazon. That's a whole nother soapbox. Check out my reels. I'll get into that. Uh, I know why. I trust me. That's where I started when I left. When I quit corporate America and left Microsoft, I was doing Amazon FBA mm-hmm. and selling on Amazon. And it's like you're playing in their garden, and they change the rules at any moment and all types yeah. of stuff. If, if you don't want to make money with eBooks, sell an eBook on mm-hmm. uh, on Amazon. So <laughs> I. But I do recommend Amazon for one of the parts of the process. So this is one of the things that I teach inside of our course. And that is when you're launching an ebook, like say, for example, yours is about um, business acquisition, right? Go on Amazon and look at what other ebooks are available about um, business acquisition. Now, what Amazon is going to do for you that most people overlook and don't pay attention to is when you go to the review section of these different books, you'll see the keywords. Now, you'll not only see what people are asking for, but Amazon is going to pull out for you the key phrases that people search to find this particular ebook. You're going to then utilize these keywords and things like your title and your subtitle. But you're also going to integrate it into Pinterest when you start selling on those platforms. And that's a big part of what I teach inside of the marketing. Now, the reason that Pinterest is where you should be selling is because Pinterest is just a search engine. So if you know the SEO terms, you're going to make sales without having to have an audience already. So there are so many layers that go into effective ebooks that AI cannot do. Now, once you've built out your outline and you know exactly what key terms and things like that, then I can go to a chat GPT and say, hey, considering that I'm talking to moms with three-year-olds and yeah, you know, now you can get specific because you know that information, what should I say about this? Well, now that's useful. But the average person is saying, Give me an ebook on how to do blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then they're taking that information, they're generating it into a system, and then they're not making any sales. Um, when, if you were to follow this research-based model, you could position it directly in front of the individuals that are already online actively asking for it. Oh, I love that. That sounds exactly like um, when we were selling on, e- you know, e-commerce and selling yeah. uh, Amazon FBA. We did similar things. We found the uh, niches and the best sellers within those niches and saw which keywords they were focused on. Plus, yeah. looked at the reviews to see, okay, you had five five stars, but people were still buying, but they were still complaining about this. Well, we fixed that. We addressed that in our product. Yeah, our- Amazon is very good at that. It's good at research. It's yeah. definitely good at research. People need to use it uh, uh, more appropriately for that to then launch whatever else they're launching off of. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Oh, man. I, I I got so many more questions now. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got to work with you to uh, create my eBooks, plus work with you to, so that we can help the youth more. Some collaborations so that we can, you know, get them the the ways to get out of the, you know, to put out those fires, but then also to create this, the long-term wealth. Uh, Shayla, I'm, I'm so impressed by what you're doing. Uh, I'm you. very excited to you know, continue even more, but I have to say this, right? So, you know, I asked you if you're interested in acquiring anything uh, and, you know, helping to scale. So we got, I think we might have a gift or two for you. So I'm going to see if the, if the team is ready and we're going to put up one of those first gifts for you in about 10, 15 seconds. It should pop up right there. Let's zoom in. Let's go. So, okay, we weren't sure exactly what was the best thing for you, but then we found this one, which is a signage company, right? Okay. And because I knew, you know, a little bit about your background, I was like, okay, maybe this can relate to the ebook world, the publishing world, the media world, the advertising world, who knows? So a signage company, they're asking 1.8 million. Uh, they have 20 employees. 
This is actually younger than some of the businesses I go for, but 2007, that's not bad. As long as it's 10 years or older, then we're good. Um, they gross 3.2 and keep 600 a year, right? Um, comes with, in that 1.8 price, it comes with 10,000 in inventory, plus comes with a million in furniture, fixtures, and equipment. This is actually a really interesting business. This is lower than what I go for now because I'm, you know, uh, acquiring mm -hmm. companies. But this is one of the ones I probably would have stolen myself. <laughs> I'd have been like, oh, let me go for it. I like the revenue, the gross revenue. I could leverage that in funding. I like the cash flow, that profit each year. I like the fact, I love the fact that it comes with that many, uh, that much in furniture, fixtures, and equipment. But I also love that it has 20 employees already. Right? We're talking about taking your time back. You ain't gonna, you're not buying a job in this one. You got staff in there that you could uplift to, uh, uh, you know, promote to operations manager and things like that, and then hire in a CEO. What do you think about this? Is this related anyway to your industry or something you might be interested in? No, not not particularly for me at this moment. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we 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 testing it out. We trying yeah, to. I appreciate that. No problem. Let's, let's, let's see if we got a, another one. Let's see if we got one more that could help. Let's see. Let's see what we got. It's like Wheel of Fortune right now. <laughs> <laughs> what pops up? Oh, the second one is not popping up yet. We'll give it another 10 seconds or so and see if the team gets it up for you. All right. There we go. It's spinning. What we got? Ooh. This one is an advertisement magazine business. That's very interesting. Now, mind you, this is a larger acquisition, and I know sometimes people see these numbers and they're scared. Well, I can't afford 14 million, but I can also help you to figure out how to get this done and structure LBOs. So this one is an advertisement mag magazine business asking 14.9 million. Uh, they're keeping in profit each year 2.5 million, grossing 7.1 million. Established in 2007, again, it's in Florida. Uh, comes with eight employees. Wow, they're doing amazing with eight employees. Uh, and comes with ff &E about 20,000. Does this one resonate with you a little bit more? What do you think? I think this one definitely more so than the first one. Um, but I don't know about either one of them. I don't okay. think they're like an immediate, immediate fit for me. Perfect. So what I'm going to challenge you to do then is mm -hmm. think about the things that would be an immediate fit for you. Oh, think absolutely. Boring businesses. Boring businesses. That's what we want. <laughs> now, mind, you, mind you, we could go off the cuff and completely boring. Yeah, absolutely. Have, you know, a, a laundromat, a car wash, a pest yes, control company. Yes, we got yes, nothing yes. to do with what we're doing with the ebooks. But I also want to see if there's anything related, either vertical integration or hor horizontal integration that could be, you know, help your current company to scale. So take, so take it. Go ahead. One, go ahead. Of, one of the biggest things with our current company is we have two different two different actual models that we utilize, two different segments. So the first is the creating of the um, teaching other people how to create digital products. So that's our digital idea bank where we're able to generate revenue. That's my absolute favorite because it requires very minimal staff. There's no overhead. It's completely profit. Everything has already been created. Right. It's a vault of five years of digital content. Yeah, so you could take down the you could take down the uh, screenshot. So for that for that one, um, it allows a lot of opportunity for growth with no overhead in it. The other aspect is still the consulting aspect of where I create digital products for colleges, state agencies. Um, a big part of my background with even working with nonprofits or my degree is being able to follow funding, right? So if a um, prison has X amount of dollars to be able to fund programming, I can utilize my knowledge and curriculum development to be able to create those types of programs. Now, what that allows is, I'll give you an example, because um, this is something that we've recently done. I can sell a curriculum to a prison facility for $50,000. And that's one, okay. one facility. So I can then duplicate that same one and sell, a, sell that to multiple different facilities. So it makes it a lot harder <laughs> um, for, so when I think about even in terms of acquisition, that's one of the biggest things that I do is being able to identify where is already receiving the funding, 
Mm-hmm. What do they have earmarked? What outcomes do they need? Taking over those contracts and utilizing things that we've already created to be able to generate the revenue. Um, and so that has been um, where my wheelhouse has been and what's been our consistent driver. Um, and really, especially recently, been something that we've been able to focus in on. Um, I have looked into buying and so that I can be able to enhance those um, mom and pop type businesses that you know we already know are baby boomers and mm. it's a huge gap. So those are, um, as a daughter of an asphalt and concrete, uh, we got so these are those are the types of things that I've already begun to um, look into and be able to acquire. Ooh. So that that's more that's more or less uh, my space. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So we got that on recording, obviously. So the team is going to uh, <laughs> uh, do you a favor and we're going to find something for you. Yes, we're going to yes, send, yes. You, send you the information. You can contact them on your own and handle it on your own if you want. But if you do want help on how to get it done, especially if you want to learn about the leverage buyouts where you can acquire them. Absolutely, absolutely. Project. That's not a space that I know a lot about. That's, that's awesome. not, yeah, definitely something of interest, but not, not my wheelhouse. I see great partnerships in the future for sure. I see we're going to make some amazing Absolutely. things happen. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I, I'll, you know, I have so many more questions, but I feel that I'm, I'm going to save it for offline so that we can start connecting and, uh, you know, figure out how to work together. But um, t- I have a challenge that's going on right now. Okay. This challenge is for this entire decade, right? So by the end of this decade, it's called the Trillion Dollar Table Challenge. The Trillion Dollar Table Challenge, I want to, at the end of this decade, sit in a room, sitting at a table, with, especially with people that look like us, and we have a trillion dollars assets under management, AUM, because that's a true measurement of wealth. It's not just cash in pockets. It's, right. hey, we have real estate, we have businesses, we have financial uh, portfolios, and yeah. All of that accumulates to a trillion dollars assets under management. Will you be sitting at that table with us? Absolutely. If I'm still in the United States, yes. <laughs> you can see it virtually too from another country. I might leave the United States also. Right, sign, sign me up. If it's a virtual table, sign me up. Now you got me thinking, hold on. What is this? 2003. So seven years, where would the twins be? Twins are gonna be. They may be out of college. I mean, out of high school. So yeah, I might be out of the. Co- I might be out of the country too. I'll be an empty nester. And I'm like, hey, get rid of them. And now I'm gone. So we are gonna be doing a trillion dollar virtual table challenge. <laughs> That's awesome. But you know, That's you, awesome. sign me up. There we go. You heard it here first. Shayla Turner will be at the table with us. And you know, Shayla, you mentioned something about the baby boomers and. I have to mention it as well, elaborate a little bit on it as well before we wrap up. Yeah. But I focus on ac- acquiring from baby boomers. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different people you can acquire from, and there's a lot of different motivator, motivated seller categories, right? Mm-hmm. Husband and wife, they got a divorce, whatever, yeah. and they broke up with their business. But baby boomers, most of them, own, they own most of the wealth in this entire world. They own most of the businesses and have owned it for, you know, decades already. And they probably got it passed down to them from their parents who started the business too. So their concept is, oh, it's my baby. I'm working on it. I'm building it. And now it's down to the next uh, generation. But that generation don't want it. They're like, nah, I want to I wanna do my TikTok and uh, all yeah. that type of stuff. So... Now it's like they have no succession plans, no one to turn over the business to, and they're like facing just closing because all baby boomers are retiring this decade. It's no coincidence that the trillion dollar table challenge is ending at the end of this decade because we know all baby boomers are retiring and we are now, it's primed for the greatest wealth transfer in history to be able to take that over. So this is something that I feel, especially the young adults need to understand from now so that they can benefit in what's definitely the greatest wealth transfer in our lifetimes. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm going to make sure you're coming along for that ride too. And you're going to be acquiring uh, businesses, scaling and teaching us how to put out those fires with eBooks as well. And I, I would like to officially request and ask you if you would uh, come and speak to my community as well at some point. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, the, uh, they would love to hear this, especially the young adults as well. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure the team uh, works with you to coordinate that so we could get you on. Yes, yes, count me in. Awesome, awesome. So Shayla, tell, tell everybody the best way to reach out to you, to connect with you, and we'll make sure we also put it down in the, the description. Absolutely. So if you are looking for assistance in creating your digital products or would like to see any of our trainings, you want to check out www.digitalideabank.com. Um, digitalideabank.com is a full catalog store. You can shop one there and grab a training or you can join our membership, which is only $99 a month. You get unlimited access to everything, full Q&A. And that is where I do live support and group training. Uh, outside of that, Instagram at Conscious Consulting is where we put out majority of our content. So definitely drop in and um, feel free to check in with us there. But between those two, you'll find me either way. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I'll make sure that we put it down in there. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Leslie is going to join right away, too, because she she really wants to get that ebook. I think you just motivated her to get that ebook done on, uh, um, you know, taking care, preparing for the elderly and such. So thank you so much, Shayla, for coming thank you on. Thank for having me. Oh, it's been a pleasure. You helped us to expose how you can make thousands per month from ebooks and put out those quick fires that, you know, a lot of us are burdened with. So y'all already know what to do. If you enjoyed this conversation, make sure you comment below and uh, uh, show your love to Shayla. Make sure you reach out to her, connect with her on the different platforms, but make sure most importantly that you are subscribed to this channel on YouTube, plus on all podcast platforms, and make sure you got that, that notification bell turned on on YouTube so that you don't miss conversations like this. This, this really was enlightening. This was something that, I mean, I've heard of, but I just never really pushed forward with. And we didn't even get to go fully into it because I, I wanted to get into, okay, well, how exactly to, to write the eBooks? What's the best way to approach the construction? But we're going to save that for another uh, uh, another episode, if anything. Right, Shayla? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you again, Shayla, for coming on. Thanks thank to the you. audience. Oh, for sure. Thank you, audience, for uh, tuning in. And make sure you are ready for the next episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed, where we expose everything related to entrepreneurship with a twist of business acquisitions. All right, y'all, let's go.